full body tracking is a subject that I've talked about many, many times, and it's probably one of my favorite parts about VR in general. Something about seeing your entire body move within VR is just really special. And honestly, it's the single thing that you can do to your own VR experience to massively increase immersion. For forever now, the only viable option for really precise full body tracking is to have base stations and the purchase three Vive trackers from HTC. Well, this has all changed recently. HTC is pretty much selling the Vive Tracker 2.0s, which we've had for three years, alongside their newest tracker, the Vive Tracker 3.0. And we have a newcomer, the long awaited teeny tiny Tundra Tracker. So in this video, I'm going to take a deep dive into all three of these trackers so that whether you're looking to upgrade from older Vive trackers or you're looking to dive into full body tracking for the first time, you'll know exactly what you're buying and which one you should buy for your budget and to get the most out of your money. Right away, I want to clear up a few things. I'm only talking about base station laser tracked trackers in this video. Later on, I will have a video comparing non base station tracked trackers like Nolo or Stonks in Slime VR, but that'll come at a later date since those tracking methods just aren't ready yet. Right now, hands down, the most precise way to have full body tracking without spending tens of thousands of dollars on a mocap rig is to use laser tracking. But that's still expensive, of course, and I understand, which is why I'm trying to make sure that you spend your money the most efficient way possible. Also, if you're asking if these are compatible with the Quest or Quest 2 or any other headsets like the Reverb G2, yes, they are. You just have to buy base stations in addition since they don't come with your headset and you'll also have to run play space calibrator, which I have a video on how to do that if you're interested. But now that those are out of the way, let's talk about these trackers. I personally think that there are five very important factors to a good full body tracker. Size and weight, battery life, cost, durability, and of course, the tracking quality. So those will be the main things I compare. Although the Tundra Tracker does have a few really cool features that are absent on the Vive Trackers, and I'll touch on those too. For now on in this video, I'm going to be referring to Vive Tracker 2.0s as 2.0 and 3.0s as 3.0, so I'm not having to say the word Vive Tracker 40,000 times. Also, for my play space, I'm using three 2.0 base stations in a triangle pattern. First, let's get into size, because we all know that size matters. In this case though, we're trying to find the smallest tracker available. I've been using 2.0s for years now, and I definitely got used to having these actual hockey pucks on me all the time, but this fortunately has changed relatively recently. Comparing the size itself between 2.0s and 3.0s is pretty astonishing, and pictures really don't do it much justice. HTC claims that the 3.0s are 33% smaller than the 2.0s, and that's pretty apparent. Although when you actually put it on the track strap, the difference in size honestly doesn't make that much of a difference, which will likely lead to me using different, smaller track straps in the future to accommodate for the now smaller Vive tracker. And even though the 3.0 is significantly smaller in footprint, it's still just as tall, which kind of makes the 3.0s feel a little chonky. However, it's not a big deal and they almost certainly maintain that height to keep stable tracking. The Tundra tracker on the other hand is significantly smaller than the even 33% smaller 3.0. It's kind of in a league of its own in terms of size and weight. You can just see how much smaller it is, but putting it on a scale is what really puts this into perspective. The Vive Tracker 2.0 weighs 88 grams, the 3.0 at 73 grams, and finally, the Tundra Tracker is astonishingly half the weight of the 3.0 at only 36 grams. Pretty impressive. Overall, in terms of size, by far, the Tundra Tracker takes the cake. But does that affect the battery life or overall tracking performance though? We'll have to see. I've done a few real-time battery life tests on all of these devices, and the results were honestly pretty much as expected. The 2.0s historically have not had a very good battery life of around four hours, leading to the commonly heard within VR chat, oh, my trackers died before logging off. The 3.0s apparently have a 75% longer battery life with acclaimed seven hours of usage, and the Tundra Tracker also claims seven hours of usage. In reality, the 2.0 lasted a little more than three and a half hours. I'm going to assume that's due to me having used these trackers for a few years now, and battery degradation is a very real thing. The Vive Tracker 3.0 lasted me seven hours and 12 minutes, and the Tundra Tracker for six hours and 47 minutes. So the Vive Tracker 3.0 takes the cake, but by a pretty small margin, and I have no idea how these batteries last long term other than the 2.0. Now, the cost is where things get a little complicated. The 2.0 trackers are still being sold kind of everywhere, so I'm gonna consider them at the price they're being sold at, which is the standard 100 US dollars a piece. The 3.0s on the other hand, uh, I don't know what you were thinking, HTC, but they didn't decrease the price of the trackers to increase adoption of full body 
tracking, instead they increased the price. So a 3.0 tracker now costs 130 US dollars. I think it's kind of funny. Vive trackers got 30% smaller, but they're now 30% more expensive. Tundra trackers, on the other hand, if you buy three, average out to $100 each. So composite, if you're buying three, which I imagine the mass majority of people watching this video will be doing, the 2.0 and Tundra tracker are tied for $300 for three, and the 3.0 sits at $390 for three before taxes. Significantly more expensive. In terms of durability, I will say the 2.0 trackers are absolute tanks. You can see the battle scars all over the devices themselves. I have thrown these things, I have hit walls, I have actually put holes in walls while wearing the tracker. Shoot, they've even fallen off my track strap and been flung across the room pretty violently. I can relatively confidently say that 1.0 and 2.0 Vive trackers are tough sons of guns, and I think that most people would agree with me. On the other hand, the 3.0 tracker honestly seems to be made just as tough or similarly as tough. I don't know where these scuffs happen, but obviously I must have smacked a wall a few times, and this is operating just fine. Of course, I don't have the long-term usage of the 3.0 or Tundra Tracker like I do the 2.0, so this could be subject to change, but my initial impression is that they are tough and that's something you will want and need in a tracker considering they're expensive and these sorts of devices are prone to getting and causing damage. It's a fact of the tracker life. The Tundra Tracker, on the other hand, honestly isn't a device that I really got to test the dexterity of other than smacking it around and dropping it a few times and it's worked fine after but keep in mind this is not the final material that's going on the consumer tundra tracker i have no idea if that material will be good or bad and don't worry later on i'll be talking about the differences between this which is the dtv1 or development tracker one and what you'll get when you actually order a tracker a bit later on but for now vive wins by default since i don't have actual final materials in hand now the most exciting part of this whole video the actual tracking quality. It means absolutely nothing that the Tundra Tracker is cheaper and smaller than the 3.0 if tracking quality is dogish. So I was going to have a series of very rigorous tests using the typical method of literally swinging the trackers over my head to measure the deviation between the theoretical circle and the actual track circle. Yeah. This is big brain time. But the tools to capture that data set aren't exactly easy to get your hands on, and that's not really a practical test of tracking quality. What I mean by that is even if the results are good, they don't necessarily translate to good humanoid tracking. Instead, I'm going to be doing a couple of practical tests. One of them, dance around in VR chat. One leg is a 2.0, one is a Tundra tracker, and my hip is a 3.0. Moving around, you can see the tracking quality within VR chat is hardly noticeable between them. All three of the trackers are working just as intended and swapping around the legs and hips have no noticeable change in that tracking quality. For the second test, I'm doing simulated occlusion. Basically, I'm swapping out each tracker on my hip and including or covering half of each side of the tracker to see if the tracker drifts. This is highly repeatable in real applications as occluding trackers happens all the time, whether it's from your shirt or of course your hands in front of your waist and if the tracker drifts while being occluded, it means the tracker has lost tracking. I will say the best performer seems to be the Vive Tracker 3.0, followed by the Tundra Tracker and closely the 2.0. Honestly, it wasn't that far in terms of comparison, none of them performed particularly terrible, and even when going extreme and literally holding the tracker in my hand, covering most of the sensors, all three trackers held up, with the Tundra Tracker seemingly drifting more often than the others, especially when almost totally occluded. It seems that while the Tundra Tracker being smaller is great, it does mean that it's easier to occlude. The sensors are just closer together, and if you block the line of sight between the base stations and your tracker, then you essentially lose tracking. And my last test for tracking quality is jitter. I'm sure you've all seen it before, whether in your controllers or in other people's avatars or maybe even your own. Jitter is when a tracker is sitting totally still, not moving. How much does it shake, essentially, while just sitting there? Sometimes this jitter can be as much as a centimeter if the tracking quality is bad, but ideally there should be little to no jitter or it should be sub millimeter jitter. The 2.0 seems solid enough, same goes for 3.0, and I do notice a tiny, teeny bit of jitter from the Tundra Tracker. It's not enough to make me super concerned, but I did notice it. And so for raw tracking quality, as for now, I have to give it to the Vive Tracker 3.0. It's a solid, well-tracked device with little jitter and great occlusion performance. But that's not the whole story. I need to remind everyone, this is a development kit. Version 1 of a 
a series of prototypes. This is not the final device, and there are known issues with this prototype. Tundra has said to me themselves that they have since fixed and improved on a ton of things, and they already have a DVT-2, and are well on their ways towards the full consumer version. The biggest improvement being the antenna, which will likely massively improve that jitter I did see, as well as just general performance. I wanted to make this video now to show everyone these trackers against each other, but also to show either future supporters or people that are just curious that even in its prototype form, the Tundra Tracker holds its own, and it does it well. It's always been a big question if the Tundra Tracker even tracks at all, and here you go. I've been pretty impressed. Although I should mention that Tundra Labs is literally Valve's official supplier of hardware development kits for Steam VR, so it's fair to say that they know what they're doing. I think one of the biggest features I'm looking forward to regarding the Tundra Tracker beyond its super lightweight and small size is the ability to swap out plates to either screw in or just lace them right into your shoes. I personally like wearing shoes while I'm in VR, some people might find it weird, but it always kind of makes me feel more put together I guess while being social. And I'm honestly getting tired of replacing track straps every few months from bad velcro. My trackers get a lot of use, and that also means the velcro does too. Having the ability to lace them into my shoes or use any strap is more than a welcome change. Also, the super dongles are a big deal, allowing you to ditch all of these dongles to instead only have one USB used. Of course, I will be revisiting the Tundra Tracker when I get the consumer version, and I'll be having a full review. But my points here still stand strong. If you're looking for some of the best tracking and you're willing to compromise on price and size and weight, I'd probably say go with the Vive Tracker 3.0 if you have some extra money. If you want an extremely small and lightweight tracker that tracks, I'd say, 95% as well as the 3.0, the Tundra Tracker is by far your best bet. It's smaller, lighter, cheaper, and like I said, only takes one USB port for three trackers. And it has a few other little bonuses like the swappable plates. If you currently own Vive Tracker 2.0s and you don't mind the size or weight or about half the battery life, then stick with it. It works just fine. However, if I were you and you don't have any trackers at all, I would not buy Vive Tracker 2.0s in 2021. There are simply better options out there. If you have any questions regarding any of these trackers, please let me know below in the comment section. I'll try to answer all of them or stop by my Discord server and ask me directly there. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.